call. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. George is excused. Mrs. LaBelle? Here. Mr. Garrett? Here. Mr. Merrick? Here. Also in attendance tonight is Mayor Thomas Lee, Assistant uh, City Attorney Bill Vinsco, Deputy Administrator Dan Toole, Municipal Affairs Manager Andrew McBrock, Assistant City Clerk Catherine Payne, and Administrative Assistant Mrs. Sam Filippo. There are four uh, announcements. Good evening. Uh, first of all, Councilman Brown proposed a new resolution at the last regular session two weeks ago, which was voted on and adopted by Council at that meeting. Councilman Brown would like to reiterate that resolution tonight. Councilman Brown, as soon as I make the other announcements. Announcement number two is the University of Scranton resolution you have on top of your packets. Council has on top of their packets. Is the final document. Basically, the only change from the copies of the original resolution that were in your packets is on page two, section G, the reference uh, to the public hearing on the project that occurred on June 2nd, 2015. That reference uh, is in there to that public meeting. Originally, the public meeting had been held, so that's why it wasn't in there initially. The third announcement is file of council number 11 of 2015. The ordinance remaining Charles Street Park is uh, untitled, untitled only. It is being pulled from the agenda. Attorney Visco will explain. This uh, resolution uh, is going to be done by an ordinance. And the issue with the ordinance is that while there has been no naming issue with Charles Street Park. We are reviewing the title uh, going back to uh, its inception to ensure that there's no deed restrictions when it was named the park. Uh, the example I use is Hollenbach Park, which has an exemption that says that if it's not the Hollenbach name or if it is ever not used as a park, it goes back to the Hollenbach family. So we want to make sure that in the uh, origi originating documents, there's nothing in there to uh, And finally, since we only have one microphone, uh, Council, if you wish to comment, please raise your hand to get the Chairman's attention and you receive the microphone. Please speak directly and clearly into it for the record. Mr. Mayor also. Uh, in the audience, uh, those who have registered to speak will be taken in sequence during the public discussion portion of the meeting. All will have five minutes to make a presentation. When it's your turn, also speak directly and clearly for the record, please. Does anyone from the public wish to comment on legislation pending before council tonight? Here, Jay. Okay. You're welcome. Traffic light is indeed there. We've talked about this 
uh, for many years. Uh, we know that there have been traffic crashes there. We also know that it is a, a very difficult to turn left and cross multiple lanes of traffic, sometimes moving at fairly good speed. So this is uh, our formal request to the Department of Transportation to revisit this, to relook at their traffic studies and relook at their engineering for the particular intersection. So we will see where that goes and uh, we'll let you know. Okay, um, you said we'll see where, where that goes. However, it seems like PennDOT and the, the, the Whoops there are playing, I don't know, some kind of a game back and forth because I've been hearing this for two years now. I'm well, just wondering if there's anything more. Well, I, I know things are changing because uh, when I took office in my first term, in about the second year, I had a lot of people come to me to try to get that, uh, to get a light there. And back then, we were told by PennDOT that in proximity, it's too close to the exit light on the other side of the Cross Valley where you're coming from Bear Creek. So that has changed, and things are always changing with PennDOT. Hopefully, this time they'll do a study, and it's, it's better than not trying. Okay, so what you're saying is that it's up to PennDOT to put a traffic light there, not Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so PennDOT's telling me that Wilkes-Barre is responsible for it. Yeah. So no. PennDOT is it's, it's, it's a state road. Okay. It is a state road. And do we have a contact person at PennDOT that we could talk to about this? I'm sure Butch does. Yeah. Uh, if you want to give me your number after the meeting, I'll get a name and phone number for you. Okay, and well, we'll we have to leave that. shortly. Yeah, that's okay. 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 okay, she'll get, just give it to Lisa and then she'll get it. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for your interest in that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, any other comments on any work of litigation for that? John? No. John Zosky, all in the lane. Um, about the university scrap thing. Uh, what, are, like, after the first one, what did, how much did we benefit? Like, because we're talking about the, the pay for the SUV. That's not all that we got, right? Like, from that deal. Like, basically, my question is, how is the city going to benefit from helping the university scrap on this deal? Six, uh, Four hundred fifty a year for the life of the car. For and that lasts how long? How long did the the life of the car? No, like unless they refinance it again. Thirty years. I don't know if those are okay. I'm not sure if it's a twenty or thirty year no. But we're we're gonna loan them how much? No. No, we're not giving them any money. Bond. Not loaning. Nothing. We are a passive entity. It's their bond. Okay. They're, they're so, uh, yeah, okay. I said, I kind of understood it, but I didn't understand everything on Tuesday. Like, um, so we're not, basically we're not going to risk anything. So. Mm, there is nothing at risk. No. The only concern that was brought up by Councilman George the other night was, will this prohibit somebody, a nonprofit in Wolfsbury, from obtaining the loan? And right now, there's nobody standing in line. Okay? So, that's not affecting anybody. Yeah. Like, if come January 1st, we'll be able to do it. There's, there's a nonprofit in which very qualified for uh, you know, the bank quality note. But if this has come to us from the uh, finance authority, they did their due diligence and they're recommending us to do this. So, okay. John, you're right. there, there's no liability on the city's part at all. Okay, yeah, that's the that's biggest thing. There's no liability, and in the past, we've gotten the resources to actually purchase uh, those deals. So, it's nothing that we are obligated to pay. Yeah, yeah, everybody was saying it, it seemed like that, but I just wanted to I just wanted to be sure about that. Right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anybody else on pending legislation this evening? Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, we're gonna add another another item to the agenda this evening. It's a new resolution. In the last four hours, the um, city of Wilkesbury was successful, uh, subject to council approval, in negotiating a settlement with New Creek. For those of you who do not know what this is about, in 2002 and 2003, the uh, administration of the city of Wilkesbury entered into a contract for uh, large amounts of concrete and they sued the Redevelopment Authority in 2006, and they got a judgment in the amount of $4.5 million against the Redevelopment Authority, which is why the city could not use the Redevelopment Authority for the last 12 years. 
tomorrow at 10.30, the city of Wilkes-Barre is foreclosing on all the redevelopment for the properties and to take control of them. The only impediment was this New Creek judgment. We have, the New Creek judgment is now at $6.433 million against the redevelopment board. We have successfully negotiated a full, complete settlement, which will allow the city um, and the administration to reconstitute the redevelopment authority for projects uh, in neighborhoods and also downtown. And it will also allow them the uh, judgments to be removed for a total cost of $200,000. The resolution that is being presented tonight will allow the city to pay $200,000 in full satisfaction of a six point four million dollar obligation and in exchange the city will obtain all of the major parcels of the redevelopment authority this includes the bell furniture lot the fell lot uh, large properties of land uh, in and around the anthracite uh, north wilkesbury and uh, so i circulated a resolution um, that sets forth these terms uh, we had an executive session because of the false pending litigation uh, immediately prior to this, and the only issue will be council uh, authorization. The payment of the 200000 will be within 30 days, and tomorrow the city will then take uh, the properties of the redevelopment authority, and then the redevelopment authority remaining slivers, those that are behind houses or something, will be able to be sold or transferred without any type of encumbrances going forward. This has been a negotiation for several years, but we've been able to accomplish it tonight within one hour of obtaining the Hotel Sterling. So um, we're asking for Council's uh, consideration of that this evening. <laughs> Thank you. I, I felt it was necessary to ask City Council's approval to pass the following resolution. Um, I've been asked over the last several months about some issues regarding uh, our park. One of the issues was that there were some rumors out there that um, the EMS operators uh, would be privatized. Um, so what I did was I presented the following resolution, and I'm happy to say council approved it. So um, let me read that if you would. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Wilkes-Barre that the City Council of Wilkes-Barre, in recognition of the exemplary service, professionalism, and efficiency of the Wilkes-Barre Fire Department EMS service, hereby extend its complete support of said service and opposes any attempt at or consideration of privatizing. Additionally, Council gratefully acknowledges and highly commends and offers sincere thanks for the vital services it performs 24-7 for all citizens of our community. I wanted to make it clear that City Council supports not privatizing the EMS service. Uh, one of the reasons I, I know how good these people are is I've actually experienced uh, the service they provide. And um, I can't tell you uh, how highly trained these people are and uh, what a wonderful job they do. So. I want to make it formal, and those that went on into council meeting when this was put together, I want to offer that opportunity to hear the resolution. Just for the record, as we're sitting here uh, with regard to the new enterprise of Good Creek litigation, I did receive an email with the signatures of uh, New Enterprise, so they have signed this and agreed to it, subject to council's approval. So we'll be in you upon uh, consideration of the passes. George, thank you for that resolution, and also thank you for putting this together um, to try to get closer to the community and get some more people at the meetings. Um, thanks for working with the school board, school board, and I want to thank uh, the members of the school board because they're paying people overtime so, oops, so we can do this tonight. Thank you very much. What we're doing, folks, just so you understand, uh, we're trying to, during the spring and summer months, is have the city council meetings in your neighborhoods rather than making you come to city council, we're gonna to come to you. Uh, so this is the first part of that. Naturally, there's logistics that have to be worked out whenever you make a change. But um, I, I thank Mr. Ryan and uh, Kathy and everyone else that worked hard in putting this together. If it doesn't work and next year's council will be going on whether to do this again or not, 
Um, and it doesn't work, at least we could say we tried to come out to the people's neighborhoods. Uh, they are going to be at different locations. What we have set up so far that I can recall, we have um, the Toyota complex on Cole Street for Mr. Barrett's district. Uh, I'll be holding one at the Fernwood United Methodist Church for my district and District A, and this is Lavelle's district who will have a GMR high school. Um, we still have to set up one for Mr. George's uh, district, but hopefully you, you will see a segregated value for the We'll find out after three or four years. Thanks again, George. Okay, any more comments on pending medication tonight? Okay. Okay, we'll get into the uh, formal voting of the items on the agenda. First, uh, and separately, will be the uh, resolution uh, relative to the University of Scranton uh, refunding uh, through the finance support. Motion, second, and vote. Second is Maureen Lavelle. Mr. George Brown? Yes. Mrs. Lavelle? Yes. Mr. Barrett? Yes. Mr. Merrick? Yes. Motion passes. Second is the consent agenda resolutions. Motion second and vote. Bill and George. Bill and George. Mr. George Brown? Yes. Mrs. Lavelle? Yes. Mr. Barrett? Yes. Mr. Merrick? Yes. Motion passes. Next, next is the uh, one ordinance. We did have two, but one was removed. So now you have uh, only one file of council, number 10 of 2015. That's uh, just amending chapter seven, where there were three definitions of a rental property. Two have been eliminated uh, to uh, the one true definition. Motion second, we vote. Mr. George Brown? Yes. Mrs. Lavelle? Yes. Mr. Barrett? Yes. And Mr. Merrick? Yes. Which passes also. And last is the new uh, resolution proposed by Mr. Vinsco, which he just explained uh, in detail to everyone. Motion, second, and vote. George. George. Mr. George Brown? Yes. Mrs. Lavelle? Yes. Mr. Merrick? Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Barrett? Yes. And Mr. Merrick? Yes. Motion passes also. That concludes the formal voting portion of the meeting. Okay, uh, comments by council. Uh, Mrs. Lavelle, do you have anything? Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Brown, any comments tonight? Yeah, um, I just would like to make uh, just like to make a request. It's been quite a while since we've heard from the management at Sherman Hills. I'd like to ask if we could invite them to our next meeting, get an update on what they've done as far as security measures. And uh, we haven't talked about it quite a while. I know uh, I haven't talked to them, so. If we could, uh, Mr. Mayor, if we could reach out to them and ask that we trade, maybe attend our next session and give us an update on the security measures that they brought through. That's all. Mr. Mayor? Just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the city administration, Mayor, your staff, Gary Vinsco, on the accomplishment today with the Hotel Sterling property. Uh, certainly, uh, Good day for the city in that respect, and I know all, all the hard work that went into it. Uh, our congratulations to that. And, uh, look forward to uh, seeing something happen there, so I'm sure it will. Thank you. And uh, a couple days ago, about two days ago, you might have seen this in the newspaper. There was a traffic stop on Scott Street, the area of Wardle Street, where the shooting event took place over the last few weeks. It's about two o'clock in the morning. One of our patrol officers made a traffic stop and uh, took a person into custody with stolen weapons in the vehicle, wanted person involved in a previous shooting in Sherman Hills. This is a 2 a.m. traffic stop. Uh, this is the type of, uh, speaking from our experience, and I'm sure Officer Marshall's experience, 
that this is the type of uh, aggressive patrol activities that are going to make a, uh, a very strong statement and going to make a, uh, a, a, a tremendous step towards resolving the issues that we have seen there. So I just want to thank the police department, the officers, and, and of course the city administration for their support in putting these patrols in these areas and where these officers are taking these measures to make these stops and hopefully we will continue to do that. And, uh, but it was very uh, reassuring to read. And third, uh, I did get a call just before I came here this evening, again from another resident of Pine Ridge. Uh, I know that you have been trying to reach out and resolve this, but uh, he also complained about the conditions there, the overgrowth, and the lack of response from the developer. So I'm just asking if we could set up a meeting with him uh, to have him come in and see what the future holds for development. Okay. Recently, uh, not recently, I believe the health department has. Uh, as of this afternoon, I was told that we weren't. But okay, right now. Okay, super. Uh, I would like to sit down. Regardless, I would still like to sit down with him and maybe yourself and anyone else that might need to be involved. Too little involved with this. Okay, thank you. Just to add to the stop and scotch, that was one of our most recent hirees. Yes, I understand it was. And, uh, you know, that, that got a lot of attention because of the guy who passed. Mm -hmm. uh, but our, our squad crew is going to do a great job patrol uh, the neighborhood, make a lot of those type of arrests. Those, you know, when we have an aggressive uh, patrol unit out there, it goes a long way towards urban type of activity. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Andrew, I just got. Uh, I'm working with Butch on a few issues, but I do have uh, two to add to your list. Uh, number one is 17 Hillman Street. I want us to see if we could put that on the abandoned property list. Then we could start getting aggressive there because it's deplorable. In uh, another situation, uh, in one of the playgrounds in Parsons, I know we're fixing up the one by the Little League field, but we have Scound Lee. Uh, and for the most part, it's in good shape, but uh, the tubes by the sliding boards are, are very damaged, and I'm afraid somebody's going to get hurt. So if we could send somebody up from the DPW there, even if we don't have the parts to go ahead and replace it, if we could somehow disable it so we, nobody could get in there to get hurt. Okay, and, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Okay, now it's time for the uh, public comment uh, session of our meeting. What you do is just, when I call your name, step up to the microphone, Try to speak loudly so everybody can hear you. And we'll have a timer here of five minutes. You're allowed five minutes. We don't allow a back and forth. So when you're done speaking, if anybody from council chooses to answer your questions, they will do so at that time. But we can't have a rebuttal uh, of an answer that you get. That's all we ask. Okay, number one, Frank Short. John Sahasky. John Tossi, all the way. First, I, I what, we, oh. thank, thank you, thank you so much. Um, but that's another thing. You just have to tell your name and where you're from. You don't have to give an address. Just say what's it. Thank you. Sorry, you know, but first thing I'm going to commend Mr. Brown for representing his neighborhood last night at the school board meeting. Appreciate it. I have some passion for that. Uh, first thing to start off with, I also have passion for my neighborhood. So I have to come back and ask about 75000 for Dan Street. If anybody would like to give me an answer, I'd just like to put that out there. Now I'd like to talk about parks. Uh, first thing, the, I was at um, Spruce Street. Um, one of the issues with it is you get to the back of that park and you go walk further up. It's, it's like I don't think we should even keep it as a city. I'd like to see if we could cut off the top of that park and try to sell it because it's a throughway from the old bar like all the way through so like people could get back there and do drugs like I could see that there was evidence of people like living there like there was a microwave back there like you know I mean there's just trash string stemmed all back there some carpeting five five mattresses I want to say we've seen like so there's a lot of stuff that could be but I think that instead of trying to like really clean up and maintain that area we should try to see if we can talk to the property owners in that area and try to sell the back that back area to them and just cut it off by fencing and so we don't have to maintain it anymore because it's it's very hidden from the street, and a lot of things could happen back there. And it's, it's, 
very dangerous. If a kid's playing down there, somebody could snatch them right up and just pull them up into the woods. And uh, also like to talk about, uh, I live in the hype section. And with the, all the expansion, and I, I have no problem with what we're doing with Cold Street to make it, but you're turning it into a super highway. So the kids from the Heights, they're it's making that a lot harder for them to go from the Heights area to get to the park, especially with you know two and three lanes, two, three, four lanes of traffic over there on Cold Street. So I was gonna ask if there's any way that we could acquire the property that sits on South Branch Street. I believe it's 36 to 60 it used to be a former Grand Street school. The school board owns the property. If there's any way that you could got, guys could see if you could acquire that property from the school board and maybe turn that into a park. So you got another neighborhood park so the kids don't have to trek either all the way down the Mayflower, which is a long walk, or over to Cole Street and have to venture versus that street. And um, I would also ask uh, if this is a splash pad work at Cole Street. And I know there's been issues with that, and I'd just like to know if that was working, and I think that's all I got. Okay, anybody care to comment? On the, uh, I'm not overly familiar with the Main Street project, however, we did vote for the uh, funding, and $75,000 is not brick and mortar money, I believe it's it's, it's not coming from the city, I know. Infrastructure to put things back together that needed to be done, uh, whether it's a uh, curbing sidewalk, those types of things, I believe. Certainly, I'm going to build a development of $75,000. That's what it is. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just, you know, the purpose of that. Uh, kind of restore after the demolition and everything that was done out there. Uh, the uh, Spruce Street Park, I, I, I'm not overly familiar with that. I've been in a little while, but I do agree with you when it gets overgrown in those types of areas. It can cause problems with people hiding there. So hopefully we can take a look at that. And uh, Cole Street, uh, yeah, it is difficult to cross if you're not crossing at the light. And the light at the top of the light at Sherman Street, uh, which is a uh, you know, yearly safe way to cross Cole Street. Uh, it's the only place that you can leave, supposedly legally cross Cole Street. I know people do at other locations. But uh, we just encourage people to come down to the Sherman Street crossing and cross there. <coughs> I've had, I inquired about that myself. I understand that that's hard to order for that. It's supposed to be out and running very shortly. Great next week. Mr. Lewis is working on it. Uh, it's been troublesome. I agree with him. But, uh, hopefully, we get, you know, there's some very warm weather coming forward. So, hopefully, we can expedite that. So we get what we need to get that up and up. Hopefully, we get you some answers. John, uh, I understand that you and a few other people initiated to cut the grass up there, so I want to thank you for that comment. Uh, uh, your question about parcels of properties that you know, can be divided and can be sold and so forth, I think that's going to be resolved uh, with this new uh, redevelopment of the, uh, situation. We have parcels of property right now that I'd love to see on the sale. You know, on, on our, our internet, our website, that people can buy. But we're not even saying we're being told that's not possible now. And if they, is that right, Mr. Winston? That, that would be possible. For sure, the process is. So maybe if the property next to someone's house, they don't have to go buy stuff. We can try to start off with that, putting it on our website. So this is going to give us, I believe, more flexibility to do it. Okay, so hopefully, some of your suggestions are good. I, I can't promise. Mm -hmm. Keep bringing keep the suggestions, you might say. That's fine. Uh, can I just add one more thing? It's not a going to be rebuttal. But I'd just like to say, like, when we have the news coming down, is there any way that you guys could just ask for volunteers? Because there have been a ton of people that would have volunteered to that. Like, I just don't want to see us, like, I don't want 16 or BRE coming and make us look bad on the news. I can't, like, I'll do something like that again. I won't stand for it. I just, like, see if the city could just ask for volunteers. Because I'm sure that tons of people, I have a bunch of people that stopped and helped me. I would have never got that done if other people didn't stop me. Just like if we have a park like that, just ask for volunteers. I'm sure well, people would. The best, the best way for us to get it out, John, is if you tell us in the meeting prior to that, and we'll hopefully we can't tell the, the uh, newspapers what to put in the paper. But hopefully they'll put that in. And, and how much space does it take up? And the more hands, the easier the work. Yeah, I just want to protect the city's image. Yeah, I don't want to look bad. And thanks, thanks for everything you do. And John, the universities, uh, Wilkes, I know Wilkes, I know Wilkes, <coughs> they have programs where they, 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 they 
students according to 400 students in groups. And then I talked to other people who said there's a 40 that's the same thing. So we know in advance we may be able to reach out to the universities and get but those students want to do that. They want to help. But I didn't know you were for this cruise ship. I, I didn't plan on it. Yeah, I, I knew it, but if you give us some numbers, you know, maybe we can get some help. It was, it was talking to kids. I talked to kids, and they're like, they, I, they thought I was looking around and thought I worked for somebody, and they're like, well, are you going to do anything about it? I guess I'm going to have to. I couldn't say no to the kids. It, it may be tough to get the kids in the summertime because they're not home, uh, but we can certainly get the word out there. Okay. okay, and then maybe in spring or fall, we can back with whatever semester they're in. And then we can reach out to the colleges and see what we can get. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Mike, back in 2004, we tried to get on a thousand park program started and we got to go off here. Um, so, is there anything you do, like, uh, like a parks or something, you know, like a parks group or something like that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. we'll gladly provide the, the equipment that's needed, like room, break, whatever. Uh, but we got very little response. Uh, the taxpayer group told me they were going to clean the cemetery one year before Memorial Day. They showed up and gave us an hour of the work, which didn't do nothing. So, it's a lot of work, it's a commitment, and again, we got no response back in 2004 to different neighborhoods adopting a park, going out and picking up. Um, that, uh, I was very upset about the condition of that park. Uh, the DPW just didn't get a chance to get to it. Our summer park started on Tuesday because the kids are getting out of school. We had orientation today. Uh, and quite honestly, this time of the year, we get a lot of rain at once the grass grows quickly. It was an oversight of DPW, they know uh, you guys weren't happy, and I wasn't happy, so uh, it should not happen again. Uh, we will run into it again in the fall if we do get a lot of rain and grass grows again because it gets around. And uh, our DPW guys are picking garbage and recyclables up in yard waste. So it's, it comes down to the manpower. They just didn't get, this is the only part that we get. So. All right, thanks, man. Okay, Ian Hughes. Name and the time you resided to the record. Hey, you know, Ian Hughes, Blue Spark. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the Big Wind Center. Um, very good for the city. Very, very, very happy about that. And I'm super happy to have the project with Cats for the Black Neighborhoods. I just want to know if anybody wanted to try and get these online. That they would see them instantly. And I know it's only a few days, but I just don't know if anybody would get to it at all. It's not a concern. Uh, also, uh, about the park, just like Mr. Sahaski here. Uh, in the basketball court on Mayflower, I know you saw the uh, panels in the court was painted over. Then you guys take away the lines. It's sitting like standing at the top of the key right now. And there isn't a top of the key at Mayflower Park. There's cracks in the court, the kids can't play. I have a picture on my phone here of a kid with a cast that broke his hand playing basketball. And we have glass glass back courts down in Monty Park. We have no basketball courts down here around the street. All over here outside the school has one. Can we please get basketball courts for these kids to play with without getting hurt? And if this kid makes any sense, we have a tournament. We can see we're paying out money. These are things we can't fix. Um, again, congratulations on all the wins. We need to fix these things. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Can we check it out on the time for the park now? Again, to, to resurface the basketball court is very expensive. We just did two parks over. We do it to the forest parks. Uh, we just did slope up in the Casey Park, which we'll do. We have a lot of Probably about 10, 15 years ago. But we have so many parts to see, we just evolved. So I'm going to try to see what I'm going to find some more parts. Bonnie Farms, that I don't know. Minor Park was donated. That was, that I believe, was donated. The banking board was donated. Hey, is that Huber Park? Yeah. We're talking about. I know we spoke about that. I believe that's supposed to be. Uh, on the list for when we applying for the funds. That's one of the identified parts that we're going to try to get resources for your service. It's nice, but I don't think she gets the condition that's in. I'm sorry, it's nice, but I don't think she gets the condition that's in. I think it's going to make me black to this point. Well, we certainly can't go back in time, but we just try to do what we can do with it and make it better. Okay, maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be resurfaced. Maybe there's another way. I don't know. But uh, this court certainly would not be there. I could help out in any way, please let me know. But that is going to be on the list. Uh, I get the five parts to do with that. Ian, uh, your comment about uh, just putting the meetings online, mm -hmm. what were you referring to? You can shoot it in the, 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 the districts. 
I'm sorry? When, now that they're in the districts, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you can do the net from anywhere. You just need a Wi-Fi connection and a uh, oh, you're you know, talking about yeah. recording. You put it on YouTube immediately. Recording. That's yeah. what you're talking about. You can watch this from home right now. Yeah. Like you Council do has reviewed that. Council has reviewed that in the past. Yeah. Council has reviewed that in the past. I'm sure that will review it again. Okay, thank you, Ray. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Walsh. I don't know, Mr. Chair, also like a place like this is not in Lacrocco. Why? Name for the record. Jim Bullock, Bullock's Party. Go ahead, Mr. Layton, and member of the council's council. Nice to see him right here. You're usually invisible at these meetings. I think it's very nice to, to make yourself you know, visible to the people so we can know who we're talking to instead of hiding. I want to commend Councilman George Brown's district for the distribution of American flags last Saturday in recognition of the upcoming patriotic holidays. And I think it's outright shameful. Maybe you're back to your old habit again of not announcing or not replacing the American flags throughout the city. Up until two years ago, that step was your, your action in action. Now you're back to it again. Shameful is the only description I can give to it. I witnessed World War II reenactment of Reading Airport last Saturday with my two sons. I've been attending for 20 years. 27,000 people there to witness the sacrifices of so many thousands and millions of Americans to protect our nation and our flag. In this city could care less. And I'm not saying those along with the merchants. They're just as flagrantly uh, neglectful. And I think it's shameful. Yes, I'm a flag waiver. You can call me that, because I'm proud of it. And I'll continue to wait. I don't know what it is with so many Americans. They're so neglectful. In 2004, the city purchased 4,000 American flags. They, had, they were granted $70,000 on one occasion, $60,000 on another, I think for $132,000. Where the money go? 4,000 flags were being sold for, at $30 a piece. Where the flags go? Where the money go? How many were sold? No accounting. Why? We have a right to know. What happened to those flags? I don't think any 4,000 American flags were sold. And among them was a desecrated flag that he proudly displays in his office. I hope that the future mayor takes that out and puts an unblemished, untarnished, purely American flag there. A number of years ago, he took it upon himself to take gas in the city gas uh, tanks for his own private car. And then the explanation was given at the, after the uh, inspection was over with, he was not found guilty, that there was no policy in effect. Yes, there is a policy. That policy is honesty, and he disobeyed it. He knew he wasn't entitled to that gas, but he disobeyed it. He didn't follow the policy of honesty. Why? He had the same thing done to his home. A private alarm system put in at the taxpayer's expense. Only reneged when it was brought to his attention that people rebelled against it. What thinks he was in and he's entitled to those things? If he's concerned about his family, he should protect them. Not expect other citizens to do it. I do it for my family. He lives in the safest community and part of the city. Barney Farms. He works in the safest vicinity of the city next to the police station. And he's concerned about his life while we others are living in troubled areas. Now you're talking about uh, uh, taking care of uh, updating and improving on playgrounds for children. Yet you're willing to spend 
$16,000 for a silly mud water fountain and spotting water and sitting in a public square. Where's your common sense? My God in heaven, don't you, are you going to put a new, fur, uh, new uh, flower bed in your yard as opposed to a furnace? Where are you, what are you thinking of? I don't know what's the matter. We're in debt up to our ears and you think nothing is spending money, foolishly. I don't know when you're going to wake up. I'm just sick and tired of it. I have here photos with two of the oldest women veterans in the United States, a former WAC, 110 years old, a former Army nurse, 109 years old, men and women just went over to France for Normandy at 26. and celebrated the anniversary of the sacrifice of so many young men and women. Men have come home with their parts of their body left in foreign soil and have to live that way for the rest of their life and this country could care less about them, especially this city. And I think it's not, nothing less than shameful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Ryan has a comment. Mr. Walsh, uh, at the last meeting uh, two weeks ago, which you were not at, Council received a copy of the Mayor's press release urging all Wilkes-Barre residents and businesses to display the American flag on Memorial Day, uh, as he has been doing prior to every patriotic national holiday. Where was the place? It was set up to all the media outlets. I didn't see any in the media. Well, I yeah, was there, Mr. Walsh. Uh, where was it? I asked that by the way. It was in the newspaper. What newspaper was it? Was in the Times Leader. It was? Okay, I apologize. I didn't see it. It's okay, sir. He has been doing that for you. But where are the flags? The flags aren't up now. They weren't up on Memorial Day. Why aren't they up? Don't cough and cough. They were up, Mr. Walsh. On the bridge. Where's the rest of the city where there was a flag two years ago? You have no answer. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. No, you don't. You don't have an answer. Don't say a lack of help. I didn't say that. What's the advice for reason that the rest of the flags are not? Give a legitimate reason. Uh, all right, Mr. Walsh, we can't, we can't go to that. No, because you're protecting him. I'm not protecting anybody. I'm you're I'm protecting him. I'm following the rules. They can't down. take the flag. I can take the flag, Mr. Walsh. Just no, they can't. You can't take the flag because you're still in sin. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Beth Gilbert. Hello, I'm Gilbert Wolfsburg. Um, I just want to talk about two issues. Um, they're both pertaining to the traffic on East Northampton Street. On the corner of East Northampton and Sherman Street, we've had a lot of accidents there. We've had accidents there for years. Um, I'm not sure if that's a PennDOT issue or a city issue, but the light, when it changes on East Northampton and then Sherman Street, there's hardly any delay. Um, and I think that's what causes the accident. So I don't know if you can contact PennDOT about that or um, if that's a city issue. Also, on the opposite end of East Northampton, down the bottom of the hill, um, on the corner of Empire and Northampton, um, if you can contact PPW, the tree overhangs the, it's overhanging and it's covering the light there. Um, and you can't see it at all coming down the hill. So, and that's Northampton, Northampton has Empire? Yeah. Yeah, I stand for it. Yeah, I stand. So, and that's it. So I don't know if you have any answers on it. The tree is hanging over which tree? Yeah. Or, 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 or. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll put it into this and get done. Okay. Okay. Thanks everybody for coming tonight. Uh, meeting adjourned.